Welcome to Market Matters. I'm Shala Chong, joined by Nadia Hassan. Finally, finally, Nadia, we see more volatility in the market today. KLCI was up 0.14% or 2.27 points to end at 1,667.97 points. Total volume, 2.43 billion, which is higher than the, the, the volume that we usually saw last week. I think people well, are coming back, days. coming back from holidays. Yeah, and I think they finally shaken off their hangovers and mm. sort of realized that, hey, we have to be productive members of society again and actually got back into the market. So top gainers were mm. the, pet, the the petrol stocks are actually moving. Petron M, Gunting and MPI, very different from how Petronas moving a few days ago. Do you know that the oil have hit, has hit the ringgit again? Mm. I was checking the yen. It used to be 35. Within a month, it's become 37. What is going on? Ringgit was at 4.4, actually down compared with US dollar. And talking about top gainers, top losers were BAT, Bintulu, Port Holdings and Ali. I looked at JFF PEC's uh, report today, Outlook 2016 report. They said that 2016, uh, following the uncertainties and volatile, tra volatile trading in China, they actually expect FBN KLCI to trend sideways at about 1,670. Uh, and with negative bias for most of first half of 16 in the absence of any positive catalyst. So the thing is, we've been having all kinds of different opinions. Some people mm. say it's still going to be a very tough year. Some people say it's going to get better. I pray it's going to get better, mm. but we'll see how it goes. Raisin stocks mostly red because uh, Beijing followed the yuan to weaken further. If you looked at Shanghai Composite Index, though, after a couple of tumultuous days, it went up like 2.25%. Mm. Uh, Japan, on the other hand, is for, uh, sort of keeping to itself uh, down marginal 0.99%. Mm. Brand crude oil is still under pressure, was traded at 35.76 US dollar a barrel. Now let's move on to host stock of the day. Uh, we selected Emiko Holdings per heart. Basically, it went up 4.35% to close at 36 cents today. Now, this company is quite interesting. They do trophy, man they are actually trophy manufacturer. And they have, they actually manufacture trophies for USA World Cup 1994, Victoria Commonwealth, Kuala Lumpur Commonwealth Games as well for the past, I don't know, 10, 20 uh, years well, ago? Well, actually, it's fascinating, isn't it? They're the ones who, when people hold up those mm. things above their head and say, I've won, thank, look at me, mum, it's... All of them comes from these. These guys are actually one of the biggest manufacturers in the world. But, uh, you know, looking at how the share price went today, we did see some kind of top gainers. The reason also is because uh, Hong Leong IB Research did mm. mention that it's ripe for a short-term rebound. Let's not forget, at the end of December, these guys received a nice little love letter from Bursa Malaysia uh, mm. saying that there was unusual market activity. So they think that the share price are likely to stage a rebound after tumbling 25% from a 52-week high. Mm. I'm going to keep my eye on this stock, as well as one more stock that we've been talking about. I've been taking every opportunity to talk about it. Kumpulan H&L Hightech, which, uh, mm. which uh, Chuang and I talked about last, last week. We called it Henry, Henry and, Linda, and Linda, basically. <laughs> that stock is still going up 4%, 2%, 5%. I'm really curious why this stock, this never moved since last week. Probably is there's on. something brewing on in the yeah, company. Yeah, exactly. So. But anyways, uh, going back to Emiko, not mm. to take it away from them, they at least have, they also are a very niche property developer and you can't get more niche than this. Three mm. developments only. No, they have a... Uh, Three developments, Banda Mutiara, Taman Bate with 2,500 units of houses, uh, one in Malacca, Taman Sri Pertam consists of only 216 units, single and double storey residential houses. I think the company probably is not looking too much on you know, developing luxury houses. They are look, uh, looking at you know, residential houses in not um, the city, but probably in Malacca and also places in, in Kedah. Yeah, so I think, but more than anything else, I think the trophy business is going to be mm. main for them. Uh, doesn't is that tied to sporting events? The more sporting events you have, the more that they want you know to buy. Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing to look at. Then if you actually look at their earnings, they swung back into the black. Actually, if you look at the year and year comparison, and mm. up the the top line, it's not impressive. It's one million at most, but still, you know, at least it's better than nothing, as we all love mm. to say. To take it all home, Amico was up four point three five percent today after Hong Leong said it is right for short term rebound. This was after it tumbled twenty five percent from its 52-week high. Now, accumulated losses dropped 4.5% to 74.6 million ringgit in the, li in the latest quarter. Now, let's move on to our next uh, segment, Stock with Momentum. Today, we are looking at Green Packet Berhad. It's packed as positive momentum by the Edge Research, but the, uh, the stock actually closed unchanged at 27 cents today. Now, Green Packet Berhad, everybody knows this company. It's a wireless networking and telco solutions provider. Yeah, actually, actually it was mm. a company that graduated from ACE. It was MASDAQ at the time to, to main markets. Mm. And the reason people know it is because, of course, part of it was sold off to Telecom Malaysia. Mm. And uh, it, it caused a lot of controversy because, you know, C.C. Puan, who's the, the founder, founder and director, you know, it was 
he, he's now part of the telecom group because he's managing the P1 side. So people are wondering what happens to Green Packet because P1 was always the thing that dragged down P, P uh, what do you call it, Green Packet's earnings. Mm. But I looked at it because they changed the financial years. You can see we actually have no comparative figures, but they're still running at a loss. So positive momentum, I wonder, is it because after the, the there was a recent sell down by OSK Ventures, who had been there for ages, mm. mind you. Mm. So what uh, who did they sell to? That's the question. So uh, sources actually say that they sold this fifteen point nine percent stake worth about uh, one point, sorry, worth about thirty two point nine seven million ringgit to a Chinese party and also to uh, Puan Chan Chung, which is the founder of the company. Oh yeah, CC, good old CC. So they say after they sold all these uh, this this fifteen point nine seven percent stake to the company to uh, the Chinese company, there will be a change of business nature in this company. That's what they're speculating. Yeah, that's, that's what, what they're speculating. Mm. So the uh, the other shareholders, of course, you know, you wonder what what's going to actually happen from Green Packet from now on. He left it in very capable hands. I've interviewed the guy before. He seems to, you know, they seem to be plugging on and going ahead. I think you can't really see until you you go back to the black. Mm. You've you, it's a story of that you've been doing it for so long. But positive momentum, does that mean that there's going to be something pushing it up? Mm, probably. So now the rumour has it that Kazana National Intern uh, Berhad might actually consider merging Asiata and Telecom Malaysia, which will form a giant telco company. And the question is, can Green Packet weather the storm and you know fight with these big boys? Nah, I, 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 I personally, for me, mm. Why would you bring it back home? I mean, the fact is you split it up years ago. What? I mean, Axiata has its own established thing mm. now. I mean, I, I look at this rumour and, okay, I might get egg on my face, he might actually do it, but I don't see the point of it. You have Axiata, which is clearly defined in mm. what it's doing, and Telecom, which is clearly defined in what it's doing. You have to give me a massive reason why you merged merge it and you split it and you merged it again. So mm. yeah, it's strange. So to take it all home, um, this company, Green Packet Berhard Pack, has positive momentum by The Edge Research. Early December last year, second largest shareholder, OSK International, disposed 15.9% stake for 33 million ringgit. Sources say Chinese party was one of the buyers, apart from its founder, Huan Chan Xiong.